Hi everyone, this lesson is on the condition known as vasa previa. So vasa previa is a obstetrical condition involving unprotected fetal blood vessels that cross over the opening of the cervix. And this can lead to a variety of very devastating complications we're gonna talk about in this lesson. So the word vasa previa, vasa is Latin for vessels. So what happens in this condition is that, as we just mentioned, there are unprotected fetal blood vessels, so these blood vessels here, that cross over the opening of the cervix. And the problem with that is when a baby is being delivered, they have to cross through the cervix. So they actually have to cross through those unprotected fetal blood vessels, which can break those blood vessels, causing bleeding and other complications. And even simply rupturing the membrane of the amniotic sac can cause breaking of these blood vessels and bleeding as well. Now, the epidemiology of this condition reveals that it occurs in approximately 1 in 2,500 to 5,000 pregnancies, so it is relatively rare. It does have a higher rate in twin pregnancies, and there are certain factors that increase the risk for having vasoprevia, and these include velmentous cord insertion, low-lying placenta, so if the placenta implants too close to the cervix, that is more likely to have issues with vasoprevia. Individuals who have conceived via in vitro fertilization are more likely to have this condition as well. Having accessory placental lobes. So in this image here, there's a multi-lobed placenta. So having accessory or multiple placental lobes is another risk factor. And another risk factor we mentioned before is twin pregnancy in multiple gestation. So multiple gestation may also be pregnancies like triplets and quadruplet pregnancies. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of vasa previa. One of them is going to be vaginal bleeding. And a key characteristic of this vaginal bleeding is that it's going to be painless. So it's painless vaginal bleeding. And another key characteristic of vasa previa is fetal distress. So because it is fetal blood vessels that are broken, those fetal blood vessels carry the baby's blood. So if those blood vessels are broken, the fetus is going to lose blood. So the fetus is going to be in distress. So oftentimes there's going to be a change in fetal heart rate, and oftentimes it's going to be bradycardia, so lower heart rate, or tachycardia, or high heart rate. And there's a particular classic triad of vasa previa. One is rupture of membranes. So if the membranes rupture, they can cause the breaking of those fetal blood vessels. That would then lead to vaginal bleeding, which is painless. And then there's going to be fetal distress because that blood is coming from fetal blood vessels, which is the baby's blood. So that is a classic triad of vasa previa. Now there are particular complications with vasa previa because those are fetal blood vessels. Breaking of those blood vessels can cause a fetal or neonatal hemorrhage to occur. So the fetus or neonate is losing blood. And then because of that blood loss from those broken fetal blood vessels, there may be fetal mortality. And this can occur in upwards of 50% of cases. So because it is baby's blood, and even if it's a small amount of blood loss, because it is from a neonate, that can be devastating. That can cause mortality to occur. So because of all of those complications, it's important to understand how this condition is diagnosed and treated. So the diagnosis of vasa previa is oftentimes going to be by clinical findings, but it's important to do other tests as well. One of them is known as the APT test, which is using sodium hydroxide mixed with blood. So if the supernatant is pink, that is fetal blood. So that can determine whether it is fetal blood vessels that are broken. If the supernatant is yellow, then that is maternal blood. So that source of vaginal bleeding may not be known. It may be possible that it could be fetal blood, but it may be possible that it could be maternal blood. So using the app test can help. And then another test is what we call the right stain. And this is where nucleated red blood cells are found. And if they are nucleated red blood cells, then they come from the fetus. So those are two tests to help with diagnosis of this condition as well. Once a clinician has diagnosed this condition, how is it treated? Treatment often involves emergency C-section. So once the blood has been found to be fetal blood, it's important to have an emergency C-section. Although in some cases, if it is known prior to the blood vessels being broken, it can be an elective C-section as well. In the best case scenario, it'd be best to perform a C-section prior to rupture of membranes. So if the membranes are ruptured, this can actually cause the rupturing of those fetal blood vessels. So it's important or best to perform the surgery prior to rupture of membranes. So if you want to learn more about other obstetrical conditions, please check out my playlist on obstetrics and gynecology conditions. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.